Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 31. I am Ryan, the GM. It is the 27th of December, 2019. Here are the players. I am Callum. I am playing Lord Eric Greenwood, the human sorcerer. Hello, I'm Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the half-elf druid. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm playing Crumbar, who's a half-orc paladin. Hi, I'm Sophie. I play Kitlith Amastasia, a wood elf rogue. Yes. Good. Good, good. We all remembered who we were. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, we are down a Dawn's Golden Reach this session. A get well soon, Stu. How dare you miss a session? And what does everyone remember from last time? Um, we killed Chip! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially, yeah, we, we, we punched a thing in the thing mm. and it died. <laughs> We have a grumpy lady with us. Do you? And, well, Crumba is running away with a grumpy lady to go get the horses. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see this going swimmingly. Um, Fast well, you're thing. on land. I was going to say, why are you it just harsh cuts to them in a river, sailing in. How did this happen? You <laughs> <laughs> let <laughs> Simple. I'll tell you how it happened. She let me direct. <laughs> no, 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 that's what would happen if you let me direct. Yeah. I love the term direct. Like, let's just well, go off to make a movie. Navigate. Yeah. Then, um... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... It is direct directing from the sidelines. Like, no, no, you need to get lost. Mm. Well, in that case, we had Crombar becoming recognised as the chieftain of the tribe by the shaman Malagas and then where <laughs> them all dying yeah and then wonderful wonderful red robed man turned up and was just like goodbye shaman lady goodbye hello everybody you know with his little wave and uh, then he took what he wanted and after a bit of a kerfuffle you could say um, which she did pretty well in he then left, kind of half cackling after, kind of half dying, that none of it even matters. So you kind of wonder why bothers, don't you? Really. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, then you were left with the uh, the kind of encampment of the former tribe. You have a kind of unconscious paladin, and about I think it was forty-five survivors. I think I said. Um, Mm -hmm. from the villages. And a buttload of loot. Yeah. And a lot of loot. That's going to be interesting to see how moral everyone actually is. Um, so that's Don't fine. Look at me. I'm, I'm, how, how would you even know I was staring directly at you? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like the eye of Sauron just staring. <laughs> I see you, Kitlith Anastasia. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then, yeah, like I think, um, as you rightly said, Crumbar and Dakana had a bit of an exchange. It wasn't a pleasant exchange. It was pretty bad, actually. Um, I would say fisticuffs, but it was um, blades to throats. Uh, yeah, it was um, that. It was it was tense, especially since I was like on what I'm like currently on what like two HP, mm, yeah. eight. Yeah, so <laughs> she could have just ended me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which isn't ideal, but it's okay. Uh, you've offered to go get the the horses to kind of give the people at the encampment a bit of a break so that they don't have to deal with an orc being there that just murdered a bunch of other orcs. Yeah, they're racist yeah. bastards. So yeah. I don't know if it's racism as a, they're scared of the fact that you look like the people that pillaged their homes and stole them and probably like killed their family, you know? Like, is that racism? I think it's profiling, yes. Um, but we'll get... I don't know, it's semantics, we'll get to that. Um, speaking of which, did anything else happen that I have missed? Uh, this isn't a trick question, I'm just generally asking. I don't think so. Yeah, I think that was about the gist of it, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. So, goals, then, for this week. Uh, let us review. Let's start with Reach. Reach, you want to keep your same goal you've had for ages? Okay. <laughs> that seems fine. Um, 
<laughs> Kitty, what would you like your goal to be this week? Uh, I'm still fine with it staying as it is. Okay, okay. You've made a lot of progress on that one so far, I must say. Um, yes, I have made leaps and bounds. Yep, figuring out how to close the hellhole po slash portals without Storia. Um, Crumbar, are you okay there? I seen you diving up and down the spreadsheet for a bit there. Um, yeah. Um, you need a new goal because you managed to get your learn more about the tribe of orcs. Yes, yeah, so I was going to um, basically have mine as uh, locate. Um, we didn't actually get a name for him, so like the red robed scorpion face guy. <laughs> if you want to try and like track down the red robed man, yes, you can have that. Yeah. Um, how how do you want to phrase your goal? I was gonna just say like track down red. Sorry, I'm really bad at spelling it. Red robe man face guy. Cool, and. That may get rephrased later. It's okay, I was going to say, yeah, so what's the end result of that? So when you find him, then what, right? Cause punch, punch him very hard in the face until he stops being alive. Okay. Okay. That seems reasonable, I think. What um, if he's already dead? I mean, I mean, if we look over the events of last time, yeah, like it seemed like he'd been killed, right? And then he could just back up. There you go. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Quite a lofty goal, but yeah, I think it's good. Um, I also changed the colour on the spreadsheet of your uh, goals because it burned my eyes. Why? What was it before? It was fuchsia. And I don't need that when I'm sitting in a dark room like some horrible RP hermit. I don't need to... <laughs> to you need some backlights on, man. Jesus. Yeah, like even at least some just some lights behind the monitors so it like doesn't eye strain. Jesus, See, eye strain is bad. You'd, yeah. you'd think that would help, but I had all the white from the monitor anyway. Never mind the blade-like <laughs> fuchsia stabbing my eyes. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, this is a sidebar. So, finish off the red robe man for good. Cool. Yeah, I'm happy with that. If you are, I am. Then Arya, we have Learn Infernal from Combar is your current goal. Are you wanting to carry yes, on please. with that? Yep, cool. Yeah. And Eric, finding a lead on Eric's that. missing parents. Happy with that still, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Um, also, in regards to that, no, because it adjusts colours and when you make maps on a monitor that other people need to look at, I don't want to use it. Um, oh, I mean, you can't you can disable it and stuff, but on it, like, I like to think of it as permanently disabled this way, though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the goals are done. I yeah, let us jump back in. Where were we? Where are we? We're here. Um, so I think we've got Crumber to kind of leave the camp. Um, it was like the last shot I think we yeah. had. Yeah. Um, together, and I think we open up on the camp itself. Um, we've obviously got Reach, Kitty, Arya and Eric still within. What are you all doing? Considering the tension in its entirety has left the camp <laughs> with a Crumbar and the Kana. Do I pull up the map of the camp? In the I mean, I could if you really wanted to, but I mean, like, we're kind of in Narrative yeah. space now, really. Um, let's see. I don't know, might help set the scene. Did that help move that for everybody? Because I learned a new trick. It did. There you go, guys. How good is that? <laughs> Yay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess I'm going to be sat there trying to decipher that spell scroll. That'll take me Yeah. Many hours. Uh, it would take about an hour. Um, but uh, okay, but could, that's could, what I'm going to be doing for the next hour. Um, yeah. What about the other two? Um, I'm probably looking through the loop. Yeah, so remember, like, I think it, um, it was all kind of piled up, because remember, it was mostly the Canada that found it. Um, mm -hmm. Like, people found stuff in general. Like, everybody found a bit. Um, but she seemed to be the. Everyone goes, cool, we found these little things, you know, and then she comes with like the sacks of gold and silver. 
was like, also <laughs> this. <laughs> and you're like, did you actually just bring that with you to Canada to look like you'd found this? To be clever, you mm-hmm. know? Is this your money? Um, but yeah. But she also seemed to, like, with the way she kind of, like, dumped it and just, like, dismissed it, she doesn't really seem to care about that because, I mean, being wealthy, you don't yeah. really. Um, and considering how much was there, it wasn't exactly inconsiderate. Do you know what I mean? It was a mm. significant amount of pennies, quite frankly. Uh, so yeah, you, you're kind of just sat by the loot pile, I guess. Um, yeah. What are you up to? Um, like, just mm-hmm. looking at bits and pieces of it, like, and then assessing the value. Yeah. Um, like one for you, five for me. <laughs> yeah, so from the chat we had 700 copper pieces, uh, 9,000 mm-hmm. exactly for some reason, uh, silver pieces. <laughs> Uh, it nine, was OCD. And there were nine, 1,900 gold pieces, just to screw with people's notation. And a small bag of spices that you, I guess, guesstimate at 25 gold. A painted glass dice. Again, there was a pair of those that you estimate about 25 gold. Leather boots with fine steel buckles that would probably sell for 25 gold. Uh, a painted glass That's miniature a of a ship. 25 gold, a uh, polished stone miniature of a temple, 25 gold, and leather bracers, 25 gold, and the spell scroll that Eric took. Priceless. From the pile. Um, it's just more difficult to kind of gauge that without knowing what it does. Like, you know enough yeah. about magic to be like, you'd need to understand what the spell did to work out how much it was worth because, you know, mm. if it was a spell of fire bolt, that's not worth that much in the grand scheme of things versus a spell of wish, you know, yeah. which could be considered priceless. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, you so, like, there'll be a while uh, going off to gather the uh, horses and such. So... What about Arya? What is she up to in this camp? Because Well, I'm still on the pen with the people. Mm. So, and I've kind of been, like, you know, hurting people and, like, giving them, like, you know, whatever food I found and that sort of thing. So I'd probably be hanging out with them and still trying to calm them down because they're even if they're not no longer, you know, trapped in that pen, I believe they'll still be quite uncomfortable being, you know, in this place considering we're staying here overnight i mean it's still too close for comfort for them i'd imagine so yeah, i probably I mean, just be talking their, to them and like this is like the site of their trauma right so yeah yeah um, so i could be keeping an eye on them and if one of them looks a bit i don't want to say shifty because it's not shifty but if one of them looks a bit more like nervous than usual i'd probably be talking them down and that sort of thing last thing i want some for somebody to like bolt or i don't know then to have to go and retrieve them from the forest around us and hope that no, you know, they don't encounter like a wolf or a bear or whatever on the way. I'm just marking in red the things that were burnt. That's all. Uh, if they yeah. run off on their own accord, let them die. Wow. Wow. Wait, 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 when did you become evil? So did you just wake up and say that? Remember, this, this is not... uh, Eric, not Cavell, so... <laughs> I'm not evil, ah. but if they wish to leave the protection we're giving them, I'm. I don't feel feel like we have the manpower to spare to go hunt after one person. Also, a shameless plug: if people want to know what that reference is, uh, go watch Filler Arc episode one, Sheepless Nights. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> sheep, lol. Magnificent warrior, that is Cavill. Cavill. <laughs> Even you said it wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I get it wrong straight away. Magnificent warrior. <laughs> we call him Maggie. Well, I shall short. channel Sibylla and see them all as my babies, my charges. <laughs> Wrap them in sheep's wool. And I'll, um, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll just take care of everybody equally. Hmm. I, will, I, I will just point out that if you are if you are listening to it, it is totally not safe for work as I burst out laughing so many times <laughs> when I was watching it. Uh. God. You make that sound like it's filthy. Yeah, you make like it's make like it sound like it's filthy, right? 
Wow. Uh, no. It was just no. funny. <laughs> it was just funny as all <laughs> hell. Um, well, I can't wait to introduce whatever the hell you end up playing in the next one, so we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, you're going to love it, Ryan. Um, I mean, <laughs> I you say that, that. You, you say that, yeah, I'm just, I've, I've already yeah, gritted by, 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 by love it, I mean you're going to hate me for it. <laughs> Probably, that's a lie. Um, well, every... Potato, potato. Yeah. So anyway, in, the, in this game that all these wonderful people have came oh, to yeah, listen to, thank you, listener, um, the... People obviously, you did your amazing animal handling check because there wasn't really a better way of crowd control that I could see from like frightened people. That the way Arya would have approached it was animal handling. So, you did a, I think it was was it a nat twenty or something? It was it was twenty four. That was it was two off and that twenty four. You twenty four. You managed to get them very calm down, trusting almost to the point where you have come in and cleared the camp for them. I, if your plan is to stay here to get everybody rested up to then travel the you know couple of weeks it's going to take to get everybody home to wherever their like you know raided villages are then that was an option there's also the option to take them back to the city Glitterhagen right and um, I, th I think he's were still of two minds what he's wanted to do in that regard was it return them to villages or take them back to you know the city. Why not? Why not take them back to that one village that is actually close to us, and you know, give them their money, and this way they can buy like um, um, rations and shit, and then they can make their way back to their own villages. Decide uh, that is if they want to do them back up. We don't know what situation, what condition those villages are in. Mm -hmm. well, it that was the seems like the best thing. Because then we. They but wasn't might. there a thing a day away from here? So I believe it was going to be give or take a couple of days slash weeks to get everybody home. So a couple of days away for the closest village, right? And then obviously it's going to take a couple of weeks to get everybody back. I think I said two or three weeks. Um, I think it's three for you guys to have done the round trip to get everybody back to where they were taken from. Um... So, let's just type that in now. Um, so that would be three weeks to return folks to villages. Villages. That's not how you spell it, but that's fine. There you go. So that's um, no canon. Right. Surely it would be a better idea to just take them to the city and they should have like a an idea of where the orcs have been attacking and what villages are even there kind of thing, because I'd have assumed they'd have some like refugee type thing. I mean, you could assume that, right? Keep in mind the Golden Order, uh, Commander Slelbas, had sent Loren, the elf man over there, the half-elf man, mm. um, to go like check this place out, so he was going to be the person to like assess everything, um, and now he's lying kind of KO'd, quite frankly. On his ass, and he's gonna like. I think he's gonna wake up in a couple of hours. I think it was. Um, I think it was yeah. established that he's he'll come to in a couple of hours' time. So yeah, it's up to you guys. Maybe that's something that crosses Kitty's mind as she's staring at the pile of money. Maybe like you think about that where you're thinking, this isn't our money technically, even though that hurts to think that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe you get up and you go and speak to her, or you try and get Arya away from them so you can have a private conversation, or maybe you try and get Eric and Arya together and narratively reach because he's totally here too so yes you get here with us <laughs> so yeah like that crosses your mind and then what do we what do we see from Kay? um probably just going over to the that dude and poking him to see if he wakes up yet <laughs> <laughs> like just kick him with my foot like well not kick like gentle nudge <laughs> yeah that, like he can barely nudge him because he's in like his gold Heavy plate meal that yeah. yeah. He's he's just kinda like lying there. Somebody's propped him up a bit. One of the <laughs> the uh, the women uh, there who doesn't seem to be there with any other family has like taken to like right, like lifting his head and stuff so he's got, you know, his head kind of like on her lap a bit as she's in like the mud. Mm. And um yeah, like the, essentially they're just there tending to the food that Arya's brought over and such. So yeah, you go over, you nudge him, 
she gives you a strange look like <laughs> what are you it, doing yeah like just a really bizarre kind of eh why, why are you doing this um but yeah do you say anything to Arya who's obviously like right next to you with you know f feeding the, the denizens Nah, uh, probably just walk off. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Where'd you go? Yeah. I probably didn't even notice. Yeah, I'm gonna unpip the orange pip on you, by the way, because I doubt your bow is still on fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have put it away, <laughs> yeah, before I started giving people food, yeah. I'll probably just do it. To be honest, I'm of... quite zoomed out, so I didn't even notice I still have it, sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'll probably just do another sweep, make sure that, you know, we've, we've got all the loot out and things. Mm -hmm, yeah. Totally not obsessive like that. Oh, of course not, no. Yeah, like, you do you do your sweep. Um, nope, it seems like between you all, you've managed to get everything of value, really, um, mm. in the middle. The only other things, like, you know, like bits of food, really, um, from these carts. So there's whatever the, the orcs had stolen from the like the villages that was like just grabbable if that makes sense mm. um so it was probably stuff that the villages would have taken to trade either with each other or with like the city yeah so yeah um and obviously as you can tell it there was like those random little trinkety things so it's just been things that maybe people have had on them as well mm. um that's been lifted uh never mind like the the amount of uh, money from the surrounding villages like it was like three villages um, or five. I don't remember the number. It was a number of villages nearby. Because um, they're not particularly big. They're very small, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you just kind of wander about a bit. What's Eric up to? Because you only have an hour to do that, but you will probably want to be taking at least a short rest at some point as a group. Um, if not a long rest. So, do you do anything before you settle down with the scroll, Eric? Or... Is that just what you do straight away? Like, do you not? Does nobody prepare the tents for anyone to actually like have living conditions that are full watch. of orc stuff? Okay. <laughs> so I've, gone, I've gone up to the top of the tower and I'm on watch. Now I'll do the scroll when we have a short rest today. Cool. Do you want to roll perception then? Yeah. Cool. You see Crumber and Decana walk off towards the woods. These all came out of. That's it, really. Nothing particularly exciting, except they still seem to be alive, which is good. Um, I mean, they're going the right way, I would think. Yeah. Um, right, okay, yeah. If that's the case, then I'll let you guys have a wee think about what you want this camp to become, considering it has been assaulted by you guys, um, and probably needs work for it to become somewhat comfortable for other people to actually live in. You know, you might need to do work to the tents and such to fit 45 people. Um, but I'll leave that up to you guys for now. We will pan over the camera. To crumber. Yo. Hello. So yeah, you and Decana are walking back towards the the woods. So maybe as like the camera pans up to mm -hmm. Eric and he's looking over the you know the plains as it were. Um he spots you two in the distance, kind of just as you head into the woods uh, out of his sight. And yeah. Crumber break the the silence at all, or do you just kind of march on? Mm. I think there'd still be quite a high tension. Oh yeah, like I feel like it'd be one of those things where there wouldn't even be wildlife noises, right, on the soundtrack. Like there wouldn't be like crickets, <laughs> or that it would just be the noise of like the the grass uh, being stepped on, like the crunching of branches, um, and whatever mm. you guys moved, and like the kind of like the, the kind of like almost metal clinking of the armor and weapons that you have, like everything would be slightly like announced, if that makes sense, or enunciated maybe is a better term. So like, yeah. if you leaned on a, like a weapon, like the 
the leather would creak ever so slightly and it'd be loud on the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So all of that's in place for this scene um, with no backing music. Uh, so I think out of um, fear out of saying the wrong thing mm. I reckon I would just kind of keep quiet for now anyway yeah I think that's safe right yeah um, I, would agree. I mean I'm not about to like you know say something that will set off a hair trigger so mm-hmm and not a single person would blame you. I... Yeah, so as you're walking for a bit, there's this, like there's lingering shots as if the camera's been set up in like tree branches and stuff like that, where it's just like one angle as you just walk in from one side, Resident Evil video game style, and you just walk through the scene until you just go out of the shot. And it still kind of lingers with like the sounds of like the branches and whatnot, like happening before it will click to like another shot of the two of you. Um, in these kind of static camera angles and like Dakana stops she like obviously her hand is on like her sword that's in its scabbard on her on her hip and uh, mm. her bow's on her back with her quiver and stuff and she's looking around I did mention last week but I'll remind people in case they bitch at me at some point she did take time to refill her arrows from stuff lying around the camp um, so she's back to tip top arrow condition um, because you know she's a survivor and other such lyrics from that song. So <laughs> she uh, she kind of just stops, because maybe she's like a couple of paces ahead of you. Um, like maybe you've deliberately kept like a step behind just uh, uh, that awkwardness. Uh-huh. I think it's also that kind of way. Like, I mean, what's going through my head as well is why I've not said in is, honestly, I think the reason she's followed me is to try and finish me off. Right, okay. Interesting. Like, I mean, if I was standing in front of her, like, she could just easily just be like, poke in the back of the head. And maybe that's another reason why like, in fact, yeah, roll insight that's a great thing to do. Uh, do, 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 do. Just checking. Uh, where is insight? I can never find things. Boom! <laughs> Lol. Yeah, right, so I think that's perfect because you don't know why she went with you, right? Or why she's leading you. So... Mm-hmm. If this was any kind of a horribly cruel, dark family movie where somebody takes the dog out in a car ride, you know, and they drive into the woods and then they get the car out, like the dog out of the car, and then they let it off the lead and then they drive away in the car, that's the vibe Crumbar would have. If <laughs> any of that would have made sense to Crumbar. <laughs> but it would yeah. make sense to us at home. So, yeah, you have this kind of like unsure, kind of unsettling kind of feeling in the pit of your stomach and maybe it's a lot of it came from like the adrenaline wearing off of the fight right the fact that you're pretty fucking beat up do you know what I mean mm. you're not in a, a good condition mentally emotionally physically like and she was kind of just dicing on the cake right in that example like you didn't even get a chance to be like where is my family you were accosted by her straight away right yeah so yeah and yeah, I think with a like <laughs> the crit fail four that you got on your insight, I think yeah maybe you that is something you've got going through your head, right? She's she's came with me to kill me, right? So mm-hmm. I think that's definitely the uh, thing. So what do you do then when she stops in front of you? Like, because I'm assuming you would notice straight away, considering you're probably paying complete attention to her. Um, when did you stop? Sorry, she stopped. Yeah, she stopped walking, and she's like holding on to like her. She's like doing that thing where she's resting her arm on her sword. Um, I take it this is not where we are on the map. This is where we're in the forest. Yeah, you are user deep in the forest. Like, we just as I said, if it's easier, I'll just not distract mm. you by moving us off there. Yeah, um, thanks. It's like just move us to pictures of some nice trees. There we go. <laughs> um, I guess I just stop and be like, "Is there a problem?" And then she uh, she kind of just stands there. And she kind of looks around. And you, you can see that she's actually looking at the ground as if she's studying it. You know what? I don't even think I would say that much. I'd just even probably have just said problem. Yeah, so you say, like, problem. And she's mm-hmm. kind of standing there. And, like, she lifts her hand from her sword. And she just puts, like, her hand up as if, like, hold on a second. 
um, mm-hmm. or like be quiet and uh, she kind of stands there and you see her like then she kind of like tilts her sword so that it doesn't like poke into the ground and she like crouches down and you can see she's looking at the ground she like huh and she stands back up she turns to you and she looks at you and she says here and you can see she goes into her bag and pulls out what clearly looks like a potion and she hands it to you Mm -hmm. with like the most deadpan look on her face do I recognise what the potion is? roll arcana (coughs) Oh, he's dying. That's just Crumbar's current frozen. condition. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just really in for the RP, mate. Yep. Yeah, you do. It's a healing potion. Oh, cool. I'll have a wee tan of that then. Yeah, so I'll give you the stats for it. Oh, well, right. Is it not just a normal heal potion? No, it is not. Oh. Yeah. Let me give you the stats for this. I just like pushing my button. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so ignore. <laughs> or ingore, apparently. <laughs> yeah. There you go. 8d4 plus 8, mm-hmm. right. Okay. My lord, that's a lot. That is. Oh, crap, didn't mean that. So, Whoa. the notation eight. would be forward slash r space 8d4. Plus eight. Forward slash R eight. Nope. Forward slash R space eight. D four. Plus eight. Eight D four plus eight. That's equal to eight. <laughs> nope. That's a backslash. Ah, oh, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> oh, come on, Scott. So see if you click I in the text box it. and then press up on the arrow keys. That'll give you the last thing you Bam! Want. Oh my god, that is a lot of dice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you get 24 health back from that. Nice. Uh... <coughs> <coughs> this is him choking up all the pain. Yep. Wow, 32 health. That is quite nice. Yeah, so like... So I think... Like I, the, I think... Sorry. No, go for it. Go for it. So she uh, hands you the bottle, like, you look at it, mm. you click that it's a healing potion. Um, mm. You've probably seen them in the Golden Order. They're probably not handed out often, these ones, considering mm. that they are rare. Um, uh, I think you know, that being in the current state, I'm like, you know that way when you're absolutely choking for a drink and it's that kind of way, you like, you like the first time you get something, you're like, oh, thank God. Gulp, 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 gulp kind of thing it's like yeah. that kind of reaction over it mm-hmm. um and then obviously i feel fantastic now so mm-hmm. like that as well i think it's kind of been like well she's obviously not gonna kill me or else why would she have done that so i kind of not so necessarily drop my guard but it's like I your shoulders don't... relax a bit right yeah yeah i'm like i'm not as tense anymore and maybe that's it maybe like after you drink it down you realise that you're like, wait, I'm not as tense as I was, and you click, mm. and like a lot of that is Crumbar going, "Why would she do this if she brought me here to kill me?" Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, do you say anything to her in that scene, or do you let it hang and see what she does? I just say thank you. I really needed that. And she's kind of standing, like, kind of side side on to you, um, and she's looking at you. And then, like, she hasn't really moved from, like, where she kind of, like, crouched down to check out the ground. Mm-hmm. And she says, You know, all things considered, you did very well back there. Quite impressive, in fact. Thank you. I'm, uh, not gonna lie, I did have my doubts it would go the way it did. She's just, like, staring straight at you. Like, she hasn't, like... It's very hard to kind of read her, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just ask as well. It's like, you examined the ground. What was it you found? Or what was it you seen? And I think at that kind of point, I'm trying to kind of... I'm kind of looking at the ground, trying to see what she was looking at. 
And she's like, she hasn't like even flinched. Like you, you'd expect if you'd said that, maybe somebody would look back at the ground or whatever. Um, yeah. And she looks at it and she says, "Nothing. I wanted to see if you would make a move against me." Well, that would have been foolish. I have no reason to attack you. Hmm. But now I know this, whereas before I did not. I just uh, on that I go. We are friends after all aren't we no we are not we are allies now does she see when she's saying that and she said that as a kind of we're allies in the sense of like yeah we're just together for just now or she said it in the kind of way of it's like no we're more than friends we're allies why don't you roll insight Because I get <laughs> bad rolls. <laughs> okay. So, what do you think as Scott for Crumbar, right? So As Scott for Crumbar, I think, just because of going off the tone that you have used, she is just being like, nah, I, would, I don't consider you a friend, I just consider you, you know, an ally, someone that's kind of we're here. We're 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 here be solely because we've got a common goal together. Yeah, and I think if that's the case, then yeah, that's probably what Crumbar thinks as well. I, okay, um, cool. Because yeah, like you definitely don't get enough to for me to answer that question. If that makes sense. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's valid enough um, for what you can assess so far. She is again very hard to read anyway. Um, yeah. Like, she seems both quite affected and completely unaffected by what's just happened, right? Like, because her confrontation with you implied that she was quite badly affected. But then, with how she stood up to you and the fact that she then went out here mm -hmm. and she still seems, like, unfazed, right? Um, she even made herself vulnerable to see if you would make a move, like, without any witnesses, right? Yeah. Um to see how things were going to play out, or at least so she tells you. So yeah, she uh, she's kind of just standing there as you're like kind of trying to like eye her up, trying to engage in what is even going on. And then she says, It's only foolish if I would have lost that fight. However, with this comfort in your intentions, I feel you don't don't pose a threat to me. And she like tilts her head slightly, and her hair kind of like falls off her shoulder a little. Mm -hmm. She's kind of still just staring at you. I intend. I I I've never intended you any harm. I only wish to try and find my family again. Tell me about them. And she starts walking back towards, like, where you guys would have ran from. What, start wa walking back it, towards the camp? No, where you ran from, the horses. Oh, right, right, remember, right. Sorry. You ran yeah, for, like, yeah. an hour, remember? No, right, yeah, sorry, I was just, I was just confused. Yeah. It's okay, with that. it was a while ago. Um, yeah, so I basically would just start explaining to her, like, you know, uh, again, it's it's not something Crumbar finds easy to talk to, so he's maybe a bit choked up as he's. Yeah, and she's talking. been quite like unemotive about the whole thing. She's pretty much just a matter of a fact, right? Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah she, she's walked off she, as yeah, if like she, she she she's she's literally just asked, like give me information. <laughs> yeah, but she's also just like maybe this will be mm -hmm. conversation for the journey, right? Because mm -hmm. she doesn't intend to run for an hour. Let's face it. So. Mm. So I guess, uh, like, stomping along, uh, I just turned around to her, who's, and just, I was like, well, um, before I got exiled from the camp, uh, from the, from the tribe, I had a wife and a daughter, and I think when I'd mentioned my daughter, I'd be like, yeah, it was her who gave me this pamphlet before I left, and that's why it means so much to me. Um, sadly, it, I had I had to leave for a greater calling, but I still, when I heard about the, these orcs up north, my fear was it was my old tribe 
that fear has came true and now I worry about where they are. Are you walking like behind her again, alongside her? Uh, no, I think at this point I'd be walking alongside her because I'm no longer worried about her absolute trying to shank me one. Mm -hmm. unless, it's, you re unless you failed that arcana roll and it looks like a healing potion, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> delayed the best, fireball! Um, I mean, even at that, I'm like at boom, 32 health, so I'm like, yeah, I can take on the fucking world. Um, yeah, so she's um, just being very careful about, like where she walks, obviously through this kind of essentially forest, and mm. she like can't really tell if she's paying attention or not, right? There's again, super difficult to read. You just know that she's being very careful with where she puts her feet and as if she's making sure she's fully aware of the steps she's taking. And then, um, like as you're mentioning all this, she'll say. So your greater calling was the great gold worm, was it? We never told her about Justoria, did we? No. No, not Justoria. Um, not Zadraka. Celeste, did we? No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't believe so. I don't think... In fact, does anybody remember? No, we didn't. I don't think we did. Did we? Guys? No, I don't believe so. I know I haven't. Mm. Um. Yeah, I would just, I would just, I would just go with that and be like, yes. Um. I ended up there. Uh. After having terrible visions of demons pouring into into this world. It's also how I learned Infernal was from those visions. No. Technically, that's a lie. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, Remember, you wrote a backstory and I wrote a backstory, and then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. we redrafted what you wrote initially. So, Celeste wasn't responsible for any of that. The truth in that, though, is that Celeste, when she picked all of you, which was long mm -hmm. after you were a paladin, she then gave you guys the vision in the Celestial Nexus. And you got the vision of the demons there. So you learned Infernal from being part of the Golden yes, Order. Yes, and yes. it was the Great Gold Worm that drew you to the Golden Order. So are you trying to mislead her in that regard? Or is that just... No, 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 that was... Memory? That's okay, cool. I figured I would throw that in. So yeah. So do you tell her the... Like how how would do you explain it to her then? Because she kind of just no, I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't bother mentioning Inferno then. I would have just said like, yeah, my my greater golem was the the great gold worm. Mm -hmm. And you can see that she's looking at the armor, um, and like her nose is slightly like creased up and whatnot, as if it's distasteful to her. And she says, "So why did you leave your family if they were so important to you?" You looked like you would have tore the entire encampment down with your bare hands. Yet you left them. And she just kind of like tilts her head, looking at you. It wasn't my choice to leave. So you were compelled to leave? Against I your will? Ex yeah. I was exiled, yes. Hmm. The, um, she kind of like gestures back towards the encampment. The chieftains seem to imply that you abandoned them. The chieftain was, the chieftain was a fool. Hmm. The chieftain's dead, it doesn't matter what he thought, really, does it though? No. Um. Two seconds, I'm trying to actually find the backstory that you ended up writing. Mm -hmm. uh, just so I can kind of, for some reason it's not showing up in my thing anymore. That's okay, what we'll do is, while you're having a look for that, I'll switch back to them. And we'll, yep. we can cut and paste this. So, meanwhile, camera zooms all the way up through the tree kind of canopy, and then all the way back to the encampment, because we only have the one camera on the one rig. So, what's happening at the camp? It's been about, I don't know, half an hour maybe? 
as they've walked away into the forest. So that's Eric, Arya, Kitty, any one of you three. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hello. <laughs> wow. Ah, cool. Got it. Right. I'm going to have a quick read for this. Cool. Thing. So, what's everybody else doing at the camp? Well, I've decided to sit my butt at the fire and unzip the little wormhole place that I've stuffed my little hawk in and I've, I've pulled him out so we can uh, have a little fly around. Yeah, cool. And out comes Halako. Alaco? Yeah. Um, Alaco. Alaco. And yeah, he flies about. Um, probably takes in the gruesome visage of the camp, right? Yeah. And they kind of looks at you, you look at it, it looks at you, you look at it, it looks at the, the gore, it looks at you, you look at the gore, you look at the loot, it looks at you. <laughs> There's a lot of nodding. Um, yeah, and it just flies around. Um, are you asking it to do anything specific, or? No, just sort of seeing mm -hmm. how it is, like how it, well, if it's functioning, basically. <laughs> yeah, like it is, like it, I mean, it acts a bit just like Ruya, quite frankly. Um, yeah. If anything, maybe it like attempts to interact with Ruya in a way, but then obviously Ruya just does like, I'm not having any of this and just flies <laughs> off, quite frankly. Um, so imagine Ruya has probably been circling and landing and flying and circling and landing. Oh yeah, she's keeping herself busy. Yeah. Um, as for the state of the camp, uh, has anything happened to it or is it just as is? I cleared around the camp area, like the bottom one that wasn't as charred, I guess. Yeah, I'll move us back because we're no longer in the... Let's not... Yeah. Let's, where are we here? Uh, yeah, so like clearing out all the orc crap literally mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah just sort of getting rid of anything that might make any of the captives a bit <sighs> yeah how do you get rid of all rather. the uh, orc core out of interest uh because it's not like bodies you could pick up and like but... yeah it's it's not bodies you could just pick up and throw out the, the encampment yeah. I mean or burn or something it is like gore quite frankly yeah. um so yeah and there's not like there's a mop nearby no I mean would they have spades shovels I mean, probably right yeah Maybe. I'd say they're probably something on yeah. one of those carts there's probably like a shovel or something yeah yeah um, golden order shovel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 um. Well, I just meant from the cart show the villages, but yeah, you probably stole the golden order shovel. <laughs> I've got a golden order crowbar. So. <laughs> it's just, just ridiculous, but I love it. Oh dear. But yeah, uh. so maybe you spend your time kind of doing that. Um, Arya, you see Kitty obviously cleaning up the mess that is the orcs. Uh, are you doing anything in mm -hmm. regards to that, or? You're still dealing with the people. Or are you going to set up like bedding and temporary kind of housing? Yeah, I'd be I'd be the person that's like you know trying to help them in any which way and also keeping an eye on them. So you know, well, primarily like I said, they're just. I, I, like, I'm treating intense. them like afraid, like you know, afraid little afraid little animals that that that, that need to be like. Well, as I was saying, like, heard it a little bit, and you've managed to kind of like the, at this point they're kind of looking after each other. They're like like binding up whatever oh, wounds they've got and stuff. They're um, you've brought them food already, so they are, you know. Yeah, in that case, I could I'd probably be helping Kitty. Yeah, um. So how does that look? Talk me through it. I I shovel, chuck it. She dodges. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so yeah, like you head over to Kitty, who seems to be trying to make the place more amenable to, uh, well, yeah, to living. Yeah, yeah. There, night. there will be something like that there, like some sort of, I don't know, shovel or whatever. Yeah, we've covered that. She's already got shovel in hand. She's already working on sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. So I don't know if she's having a conversation about anything, if she's making plans at all. No, I'm pretty focused on the job at hand. 
Yeah, I think both of us would be like trying to get this sorted so that we could all go to sleep. Mm -hmm. The sooner it's done, the sooner we don't yeah, really have exactly. to. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, like the the tents then need to be sorted and like living kind of conditions, I guess, need to be fixed because you could probably fit two people in a tent. So three at a push, right? Yeah. So there's three, six, nine, twelve. Fourteen usable ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ones that have got the red crosses on—are they like totally destroyed? Then. Yeah, those are the ones the fireball took. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, you could probably cram forty-two people in tents. The out of the mm -hmm. f say forty five villagers, um, so that doesn't account for you guys or three of the villagers or Loren. You guys obviously have like camping gear to sleep outside yeah, that's anyway. Cool. Yeah, so well, you might not have specifically a tent unless any of your backpacks actually say you have a tent. You you've got your sleeping gear you'd be sli sleeping in anyway. So I don't think any of you specifically need a tent as such. You just also probably want to stagger watches. You know, so that nobody's asleep at the same time. Um, to keep an eye on things. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was all women and children as well in the air. Uh, like, oh, fit more children in, in the tiny. Well, that's why you can fit three in some of them. Uh, I have accounted for that already. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, I got, I got you. I did the math. <laughs> um, like, you could probably make a... Like, shelter underneath the tower. You know? Um, yeah. Where Eric is. Like, you could probably take the rags from the the tent up there, the bigger tent. Uh -huh. And you could attempt to make that into some kind of, like, shelter. Um, if somebody wanted to give me a survival check to do that. I shall do that. Cool, yeah. Oh no. Oh, I cannot do that. Cool. So you start destroying the remnants of this kind of piece of fabric. Why are we not surprised actually? <laughs> like <laughs> Oh no, as soon as I said it I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so yeah, you're um you think maybe because you're up there, right, Eric, you look around and you think I know what we could do. We could use what's left of the, you know, you know, the bigger kind of tent to like make a shelter yeah. under here. That could be something. I'm, I'm going to say it's completely unusual because I already burnt it to a crisp. It's uh, not my fault. It's Ari's fault. No, because it's there and you had the idea to use it. So the role was you attempting to make that serviceable, uh, and it isn't. You can't make something serviceable if it's not serviceable. That's maybe what you tell them. <laughs> but that would be a lie. <laughs> it's not a lie. It is burn. <laughs> it might, don't want to it might be burn. considered Eric's truth. <laughs> yes. Oh dear. I'm trying to help. All right. Leave me alone. Yeah. I'm gonna go back up to the top of my tower. And it's just not watch. quite Dungeon Fun World, missiles. sadly, where you could get XP for trying and failing, sadly, <laughs> which is a wonderful system. But um, yeah, so. I think at some point you two see him head away up to that big tent pulling bits of it, maybe some of it's still in fire. He drags it across the encampment and um, the fire goes out in the mud obviously from the encampment. It's getting darker again and colder. Um, he starts to like throw bits of it and hang it on like the corner of the tower and stuff and it keeps falling down and it starts to tear and you just see like a frustrated Eric for like 10 minutes just standing with his hands on his hips huffing for a bit. Being like, hmm. Clearly it was unusable. Um, but yeah, so you still got three people to get in somewhere. <laughs> Thunder wave! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Totally unusable. Um, could you believe this thunder wave from nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what happened. Clear a second ago. <laughs> Amazing. Um, you could maybe use what was destroyed of the cart, right? If you wanted to try that. Yeah, I'll do that. Cool. Oh. I do another survival roll. 
Yeah, I need you to do with disadvantage. Fail. I need you to do with disadvantage because you don't have tools. <laughs> yeah, I probably can crit fail this again. I mean, it's not as bad. And I think, yeah, this one's more a case of you don't have like a hammer and nails and a saw, right? He gets a splinter. Like, whether or not you would even know how to use those, you don't have that skill because I'm going to assume Eric does not have like carpenter's tools or woodworking tools as a oh, no. proficiency yeah no I am proficient in free dragon anti <laughs> so a game <laughs> 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 that's fine the yeah I think that's maybe just you trying to work out what you could do to like you know accommodate three other possibly four other people because you probably want to put Loren somewhere right that is yep. Securable. Um, At least I'm trying. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, mm. But yeah, so what is the camp doing about your, let's call them your your four unassigned people? We need that resolved. Oh, Don't she's hidden. <laughs> Goofed by the goal. Chuck. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> oh no, the formula of a monster. Just the cleaning is going really well, that's all. There was a lot of orcs. <laughs> yeah, there were. A lot of bits of orc. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to chuck them all in. Obviously, these people have all moved. Have they? I mean, you haven't told me you've moved them yet, right? I'm not going to chuck it in there just yet. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, if anything, would chuck it up, like, here, I mm. guess. Yeah. Just roll yeah. off the cliff on the other side. That way they definitely can't see it. They're not bodies, though. It's like slosh. Slush. Yeah. Bits of... Just start getting, put it in a bucket and throw an object. Just put it in a bucket. <laughs> put yeah. it. So I'm going to move this pile, which also includes K. Um, oh no! So uh, I, I guess you just dump it in there, which is like the smouldering remains of that place. What? What? Basically, the 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 mass death of mm -hmm. all the orcs. Mm -hmm. just, just mm -hmm. Chuck it, chuck it away. And then, like, as you do that, like, there's bits of like weapons and bits of armor and stuff, like. Give me. Throughout the slosh. Um, well, we discussed that last time when people were looking for stuff. It is all just like really kind of crude weaponry. Um, what so about the big body? What big body? And yeah, no. Crumbar searched it. He got an axe out of it. Oh no, no, I'm not saying whether it's got loot on it. I'm just saying it needs to be moved. As yeah, well. you are correct. But I love how you're just standing up on your tower, but like that also needs to be moved. <laughs> I leave people. I don't. Do <laughs> I just sort of look up at him, like <sighs> you know what. I'm gonna Trust get another, you. I'm gonna get Alico to poop on him. I mean, it'd be a ghost poop, really, but <laughs> I will blow that bird off. I, I, I'd say ghost poop is even worse because you can't really brush off a ghost poop. <laughs> right, I'm going to charge all time. my sorcery points into a level three spell <laughs> to defend Alico against ghost poop. Alico quickly zooms to me, and I shove him back in his dimensional portal. Zip. <laughs> mm. well, now I'm glowing, <laughs> but don't mess. I will blow that bird up. If you do, if Ruya really does that as well, I will blow you, you, you up. I just, as I'm staring at you, I just unzip the portal. Aloko sticks his head out and does like the equivalent of a sticking tongue out face at you as well, and then like sticks his head back in and zip. You just see lightning balls and I go, I'm just like, I'm gonna blow you the fuck up. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I feel like the villagers aren't okay. Right? With a man who's just started glowing blue at the top of a tower, staring vehemently at his compatriot, considering they watched that happen before and a big orc started swinging an axe <laughs> at their druid friend. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I also can't help but notice that there's still four people that needs to be housed. I cannot help with it. I have tried. It's up to the rest of the party. Well, we'll now. be around the fire, so we can probably like have them sleep next to us. 
elderly and kids go into the tents and those who are so on, what about like, Loren though? Decent age. He's gonna have to chill next to Yeah, I mean if there's kids he's there, surely we can shove him. more kids in one tent than like adults. If you could put three three kid well, three adults in a tent, then surely there could be like five kids in a tent. So as I said, I did the maths. You can house forty two people in tents. Oh okay. Yep. Fine. It was very simplistic. <laughs> So there's 45 minus one because there'll be one woman looking after Lauren, and they can sit next. Well, not necessarily. Like so she was literally more. doing that until you guys dealt with him. Quite frankly, so his head wasn't just in a pile of blood and gore and former villagers. I unmuted that just as I burped. I do apologise. It's okay. Wait, what? <laughs> just had a gush of air. That was a burp. So. Three villagers and Loren need housing. I primarily because Loren still hasn't woken up, so I think we could do with keeping him near the fire to like, you know, make sure because if you're knocked out you don't always regulate your body temperature decently, so So do you just want to do that then? That's maybe a good idea. Yeah. Um, so I'll just go grab a leg, start pulling. Yeah, I don't think it's that difficult. Like, if, like that woman's probably gonna help you if uh, nobody else will. Um so do you wanna move him down to the that one near the, the watchtower, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can like dump him there. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Stick him on that one. I always said dump him there, but like, you know, you know what I mean? Slightly less yeah. than unceremonious. Um, okay, yeah, so you move him there. They're obviously you've got a fire going. Um, yeah, you don't see anything on this horizon, but it's getting darker as well. Eric, so you're literally the worst person to go up there. Nope, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, that night vision that you do not have. Yeah, I was going to say, I think <laughs> out of everyone, you're the only one that doesn't have night vision. Well, I mean, that's why I took the watch initially while they were setting up camp, so I can then go to bed and go, then wake up in the morning and take the last watch, because it'll be brighter. But until that point... Yeah, you totally thought of that on the fly, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, the campfires that are lit, obviously, are uh, giving off some light. Um, are you... Moving the villagers then, or are you leaving them as is? What's happening? I put some lights ab above as well, all around, so people can see mm. in colour. Let's see. So, three, so 15 people can go up there, and then one, two, three, four, five. How much is each token? Five. five. So like yeah, and that's one, two, three, four, five, and then these two are housed as well. So there's essentially these people <coughs> still to go. I mean, can we like use the cats or somewhere for? Someone to lay in and rest in until we move. I mean, it'd be cold. Exposed. I mean, you have to pull them near the campfire, but like, what else can we do? There's nothing else here to use unless someone wants to go like outside and gather loads of leaves. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole bunch of orc axes at your feet, right? Like, you could probably go do chop down some trees or some shit if you wanted to go all kind of survivalist. There's also a load of planks here that mm -hmm. we could use. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. And these boxes as well, so we can stack the box on top of each other as well. And you put the planks across the top. Just to play Jenga randomly? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You have like, you make like a weird like... I, I am totally down for playing Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, like what you're doing, you just need to decide, really, and then give it a go. Because it is getting darker. I think we should use the structures that are around us, so like the wooden plank steps there, they've got a fence as well, that's, you know, just, I guess, pull it out of ground the best we can. Yeah. Try and make a frame sort of thing on the tower, in in the tower, under the tower. Uh, that's, that's already structurally sound, we just need to prevent wind getting in. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to have four walls and a roof. You could literally just have a lean-to kind of thing, like just lean it against thing. Yeah, because realistically, right, only three sides of it are exposed, 
really, mm -hmm. right? Because the one at the fence is probably covered, right? Yeah. I if mean, anything, if it... you could just lean everything against the outside fence, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, who's who's trying that? Not me. Well, I'll give it a shot. Cool. While we still Do you have any daylight. tools or proficiency? Um, not really. Okay, it will be a disadvantage. It's a survival rule. Oh. You should be okay at this. Oh, disadvantage. Well, you say that. So what? Wait, what is it you're rolling for? To be able to build a structure. Basically, to try and like shelter these like miscellaneous four people. Ah, right. Okay. Right. Mm. There were three villagers and uh, Loren. Yeah. I. I think it is again. It's mostly the the same thing Eric came against, where you think, "Oh, we could use this, this, and this," if mm. we had tools to make that work. I mean, I have got an explorer's pack that has a tent in it. I can't remember. Uh, let's find out. So let's look up packs. I mean, tents are tents are good. Explorer pack. What do you get in it? Backpack, bedroll, mess. No tent, just a bedroll. Ah. Oh. Yep. So oh. you could sleep rough if you wanted, and you could attempt to use your bedroll to cover up somewhere, or just like hand it to people. Um, like he's all could in theory do that, but can he, can he give handouts? What? No. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I imagine even orcs wouldn't like sleep on the floor. Probably got sort of a bed in there. I mean. They probably sleep on animal skins on yeah. the floor, which other people will be using to sleep on, right? Like all those villagers that are crammed in tents now. Is there any animal skin skins spare around? Or? Uh, no, you're actually short four. Remember? Oh, okay. So there's like now. I wonder if there was any spare ones. Not no, because people are like you... moving. Like it would be two orcs to a tent, right? So. That's if there was this many orcs, and it, from what you've done with your supplies that you have found that aren't burnt or whatever, you have managed to house 42 of the 45 villagers. Oh well, we'll just have to eat the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> just hear it on the wind, wait, wait a minute. Mm. Eat them. <laughs> but yeah, so... What about our druid? Who's very quiet? Any... Any attempts? Well, I don't know, because I have the same thing. I have the bedroll, not the... Mm -hmm. So I don't really know how... I mean, a bedroll's just like a sleeping bag, so you can just exactly. have a wee night. I mean, it's not like it's bad weather, I'm guessing, so yeah, just have a wee camp out under the stars. How is the weather? Yeah. <laughs> oh... Yeah. I dropped past that. The thing is, you just don't know what it's going to be like yet. Um, because it's, you know, just getting dark, and I don't think Emsy's from here, so you don't know what it's normally like here at this time of the year, etc. You know, I mean, currently it it was clear, bright, and kind of cold, right? But that's about it. It's getting colder. That's what you know, Eric. Also, so for all of us, I think. But yeah, that's okay. Wow. Um, God dang it. Hmm. I need to put a sign up outside saying, don't make loud. <laughs> I'm the same here, don't worry. <laughs> Since I'm glowing, I'm going to stay at the top of the tower so I don't worry more villages. Yeah. I'm just going to have a nap up here. Might be cold, but I'll wrap myself up in my cloak. Okay. Um... Yeah. So, we still don't have an answer for this yet, just so you know. Like, are you just leaving them to it? Is that it? Or... Well, I think some of them could also volunteer to, like, you know, keep watch as such. Right, okay. Those with, like, family... Be like, Probably yeah, family still shell struck to be honest. Yeah, I don't know how good they would be. Um, like watch. But they could keep company whoever to whoever one of us is mm -hmm. keeping watch. 
I mean, I guess. they're probably all human, so I imagine they don't have that vision either. The idea is, is, is company, and they might feel reassured by by you or me no, or whoever No, no, they, they will not feel reassured by a glowing blue man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad idea, right? Try and get them looped into the defense, right? It's not a bad idea. Uh, who wants to try and break that to the group? Who would like to do the persuade role on that? Shall the glow and blue man do it? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really are like... <laughs> you, you. Okay, go for it. Yeah. So how do you how do you pose this to them out of interest? Did you give your rising um, speech from a, on top of your tower? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm stood on my tower and I'm glowing blue. <laughs> Listen yeah. to me, peasants. Hmm. How to uh, phrase this? I mean, that's what I'm asking. Literally, how are you phrasing it? You know? I know. This is, I'm asking myself the question. I'm speaking to myself more there. Uh... Hmm. I would. I don't like. I probably shouldn't do this because I'm glowing blue. No matter what I'm going to say, I don't trust you. I mean, how do you? Eh. I guess. I'll be saying. There isn't enough beds to go around. Uh, we're, we'll all have to take turns sleeping. So while it's not your turn sleeping, if you want to help us keep watch and keep all your family members safe as best we can, it'd be much appreciated. Mm. And then yeah, go for it. The sweeter all. Yeah, I think it goes pretty well, right? I'd say the. Um, <laughs> They understand the situation. You seem to have been a good thing for them so far. So, yeah. Um, a bunch of them think, yeah, cool. That sounds like a plan. So I think maybe like five of them or whatever <coughs> like are at a time when we'll start rotating through the adults that are like in reasonable condition, right? Um, the elderly and the children probably won't be taking watch. They'll all probably get bedding and such. Um, and yeah, a couple of the villagers. Keep in mind, it's all, as I say, it's all women. Um, and they'll, yeah, they like kind of stand around, not really sure what to do. Like, a couple of them pick up some of the orc axes and swords, right? Um, just kind of awkwardly. Because they're, you know. Clearly not fighters. No. Um, like farmers and stuff. Yeah, right, they're literally people that went out in the middle of nowhere, they ha they live in a village that's maybe got 15 people in it, right? And <laughs> it was just attacked by a bunch of orcs. Um, like they're probably reasonably familiar with each other as well, because that's probably the villages they trade with, right? So, you know, one village will probably have pe pigs, other ones will have, like, chickens, etc. Um, yeah, and maybe, like, wheat and various other such things, I don't know. I'm not some kind of medieval economist, so, yeah. But yeah, you successfully uh, do that. And I don't know if some of it's maybe out of um, fear for the fact that they saw you throw lightning around, <laughs> right? And now you're kind yeah. of like giving them orders with a weird bit of kind of thunderous reverb to it, so, yeah. And I'm glowing. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I am like you... the good overlord. Sure. <laughs> um, roll perception at disadvantage. Cool, yeah. You just make out one of the, the women that is like kind of half holding an axe like upside down, so the axe head's at the bottom, um, and she's kind of clutching it to her chest, and she goes like past Kitty, um, who's obviously sat next to Lauren uh, by the fire, and She's like, isn't it a bad idea for the glowing one to be on top of the tower? Isn't he like, doesn't he stand out? Nope. Oh, he'll be coming down soon. He can't see shit in the dark. <laughs> oh, it's it's not about him seeing, it's about him being seen. I was worried about. That's the thing, I'm a deterrent to be. Um, do you shout that down? Yes. I am a deterrent! No one wants to mess with 
The glowing blue man. And then I think she just looks at you like, sorry. And then she turns to Kitty and just gives you a look. And then she says, is he always like this? <laughs> yes, what, a dick? Yep. She goes, I think I'll go make sure the gate is closed again. Um, <laughs> and she yep. just wanders off and like patrols. Then she like speaks to other like women of the, the village and is like, you can come with me. And like puts the axe in her hand and she picks up something else. Like, I don't know, like a, a shitty sword or some shit. Or like, I don't know, a bit of armour that she's just holding, like a shoulder pad or something <laughs> that she's just holding as if it was a weapon. Um, and they head over to like the gate to make sure the gate's closed. Um, which yeah, anything's uh, a weapon if you can hit them hard enough. Well, I mean, it's heavy and the orcs had it, so that's what mm -hmm. her logic is. So yeah. Um, but she goes over and so like, makes sure the gate's what, what like, is she, Wait, what has she picked up? Well, she was holding an axe awkwardly, and then oh, right, she went okay. to like leave the vicinity of Eric because he's being mm -hmm. weird. So she hands the axe to another villager she's clearly familiar with and says, you can come with me. Because she doesn't want to go to the dark part of the camp herself, obviously. Um, yeah. There's a little glowing part, a blue light. They only give off like the smallest amount of light. Right, you can go right there. Yeah, so you start moving like, storm out. clouds around and it freaks her out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm providing light! But yeah. What's Harry up to while all this is happening? I have interest. I was just thinking, like, if it's that bad with light and stuff, I mean, I could technically, like, make fireballs and, and, and use them to, like, I don't know, put little torches on the ground, you know, like some people have in their very fancy gardens. I mean, do you but all have these torches? ones with actual fire. Yeah, yeah, but you know, like, know. sometimes like, really <laughs> rich people, and they have like, parties and whatever, yeah. they'll have like, a little trail in their garden that's just like, but I mean, literally, you could just little do that torches, torches on both sides. Yeah, 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 so I, I technically could make a hell of a lot more light if people wanted to, just saying. You, you know, could also just cause that fireball spell again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no more fire from you. No you more freaking out time. people. Yeah, plus yeah, you might, you might need that, up. right? You might need that. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's fine. Like, so, do you want to make torches out of stuff lying around, or do you want to use torches you have in your backpack or whatever? I mean, there's gonna be like various bits of wood and stuff that haven't 100%. completely yeah. not really carbonized so yeah i might as well use those in my limited resource yeah cool do you want to give me a survival check then uh sure one moment And, Ta -da! Yeah, and I think as Eric's moving these light sources about, he realizes that he's moved one near a torch that clearly wasn't there moments ago. Um, and then he looks around for Arya, and she's just dotting around these torches she's made out of like the remains of some of the burnt tents and stuff, um, and like shattered bits of wood and stuff from the debris that's lying around. Um, and she's just lighting them. I'm assuming you're doing it with like your cantrip magic as well. You're just wrapping the rags oh, yeah. around. Cantrip. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course. Um, I wouldn't be doing anything sophisticated, just, you know, enough of a flame to, um, you know, catch on on a bit of... Yeah, and you've maybe found, like, oil or something yeah. as well somewhere that's maybe been used to, uh, like, for various, like, I don't know, maybe it was going to be some kind of flammable... Or lighting thing. torches. Yeah, like, very possibly. Um, um, that might have been within the, the, the village kind of stuff, because they would need light and oil for maybe lamps yeah, and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. They would have um, done that anyway. Yeah, so the orcs probably wouldn't have had anything like that with them unless it was for bombs, right? Um, it would definitely have been the villagers. Yeah. Um, because as Crumbar can... Is there food raw, though? Because they probably would have had that sort of stuff for cooking. I mean, they're the shaman, right? So... Do you know what I mean? Like, if they needed fire, they had a shaman, so... If they really plus they wanted to eat. I mean, I think Crumbar could feel that question. Like, I don't think they would begrudge raw food if they yeah. had to. Um, no, they would just yeah, yeah, just get a bit of wee nom. I'll put a wee fire over here as well. There we go. Um, I mean, I think every 
humanoid will need to learn how to have some kind of food cooking -ness. Yeah, um, I don't think they're going to... I mean, considering they made this entire encampment, right, I think the orcs are doing okay. Um, yeah. People smoke in this universe? I mean, who knows, maybe some of the the orcs had uh, these sort of vices. Some halfling pipe leaf. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's good. Um, I think with that then, we cut back to... Uh, now, I was going to say like a romanticized shipping name for them and I realized the first thing I was going to say I'm not going to say so I was like nope it's fine we'll move swiftly on <laughs> the Canabar is a much better version than the other version so yeah we switch back to a Crumbar and the Decana and yeah like it's starting to get dark now and um, you know it's because obviously a it gets dark, but your eyes obviously start to filter out color, because um, obviously mm -hmm. dark vision's like monochrome, so um, that changes. And mm -hmm. yeah, like you're still just trekking through. It's maybe been an hour now, um, mm -hmm. total. It's going to take at least another two hours for you to get there and back, um, based on the pace you're making and like the terrain route that you're going through and also it's dark right so it might take a bit longer but you estimate roughly another two hours um like how does the conversation mm. continue from where he's where um or does it are you quiet again or um yeah so it just kind of felt her in like you know basically it was i i wasn't happy with obviously the fact that they were basically like there was a cult in it of the that was following the red dragon, and obviously, um, I don't think I'd maybe at this well, point mention. Don't like summarize it. Say it to her then. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So when we last left off, she was asking me why I kind of left and stuff. So I'd be like, "Well, yeah." Well, her her point was the chieftain's dead now. So what does that matter? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, um, like. And that kind of flippant, he's dead now, so it doesn't really matter what he thought of you. But her point mm. was, he said you left, you ran away. Mm. But not that um, you were exiled, you were exiled, you were considered an exile because yeah, you ran I away. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, uh, obviously, in Crumbar said, maybe he thought he had to leave, based on, obviously, what transpired, yeah. but that's maybe what you could bring up. So, yeah, we could maybe pick back up for her saying, well, what does it matter, he's dead now. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. He is dead. Long may he be dead. Well, I hear his erections are expensive. And she kind of <laughs> smirks at that. Um, without really kind of breaking pace, you know, mm. and she's kind of doing, because she's walking swiftly, but not anything that would, like, tire somebody out, you know. She doesn't mm. necessarily seem in a rush to get to yeah. these horses. I'll just say, um, either way, I found salvation across the sea. And it was a journey I had to go alone. And she says, um, and you consider the, you know, shadow of the great gold worm to be salvation. Hmm. It's led me to where I am now, so yes. And are you happy? And she stops at that point and turns and look, kind of looks at you square on and goes, are you happy with where you are now? I just kind of, uh, I just kind of like, yeah, have I think a bit as of, you, like a chuckle. I, I think as you're like kind of laughing, she'll then like, she'll kind of fill that kind of gap um, and she'll say, do you enjoy your salvation? And she kind of like motions around her to like the dark woods. I just kind of, uh, you know, after having a wee giggle, I would just say to her, I was like, happy is, isn't an option, isn't really an option. Just stopping evil is. She kind of like tilts her head slightly, um, as if that's kind of surprising that like you kind of, she, you said something she did definitely did not expect. And um, mm -hmm. she says, Stopping evil, like your former chieftain, would you consider him evil or was he looking out for his tribe? 
they were evil. No f form of uh, any form of that corruption and what they have done to the people of this land is all evil. You can see she's clearly thinking, right? Like she hasn't just like mm -hmm. wittily retorted or anything. And she stares kind of... Again, she hasn't like broke her eye contact with you really, she's kind of like staring slightly, kind of tilted. Um, like her head anyway, not her attitude. And she... She says, good and evil are viewpoints of those who don't matter. And she kind of like, her face like tightens up in the sense of, you know, she like, like a determined look, you know, when she says that, as if she believes this. Mm -hmm. And she kind of like nods once, you know, so good and evil are the viewpoints of those who don't matter. Then may I ask why you came along? You know why I'm here. Mm, true, but why did you want to help if good and evil do not matter? Help is an interesting term. I came because it suited. What about it suited you? She grins. It's a very, very wide grin, right? Like, you'd love to know that type answer, right? That's the look that she's got, yeah. you know? Um, you know, like when you clearly see somebody that shouldn't be where they are, and you go, how did you get there? And then they just laugh, like they just smile at you. It's that yeah. toothy shark grin type thing. And In that case, I was... Yeah, so she just she just smiles. Yeah, if you if you say anything before she speaks, yeah, go for it. Mm. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll hold back now. No. And she says, You would love to know what goes on in my mind, wouldn't you, Chieftain Crumbar? She kind of like does a little kind of curt nod to you. I just kind of like, again, that kind of smirky laugh and go, I can hardly be chieftain to a tribe of dead orcs, can I? And, uh, again, have a wee laugh again. Yeah, like you're clearly like kind, laughing in yeah. that kind of, you know, I don't know <laughs> what to do. Yeah. Kind of like, I'm laughing because if I don't, I'll probably cry. Mm. And then, um, yeah, she seemed unmoved by obviously laughing. And, like, her, her smile kind of drops back to her kind of passive face. Um like her unmoving, kind of hard to read face, and she says, I'll tell you because I actually have been impressed by you. The sheer determination to achieve your own goals, your ideals, your, your desires, no one else's, that is admirable. You shouldn't feel shame for your achievements. You are a chieftain of your own tribe. This certainly isn't all of your tribe. Or am I wrong? Hmm. Well, and I no longer know what. I, I, like, I lost you there. I just heard well. No, I right. didn't. Can, can you can you still hear me? Yeah, it must be my connection. But yeah, go for it again. Yeah. Um, basically to say it's like, well, it's been years since I left. I no longer know what the size of the tribe is. This could have very well just been it. Wouldn't that be unfortunate for you? I'd just stay silent. Yeah. And kind of, the kind of that, I realise kind of what she's meant, meant, meant by that. And I'm just kind of, oh, mm. yes, it would be. Yeah, right. And then, uh, this is like really like a harsh, dry counselling, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. And she's there, she says, uh, like, again, if the audience were watching this scene, you'd be kind of staring maybe into like the distance, the dark distance, uh, realising what her words mean. And she'd kind of be looking up and down, kind of as if constantly trying to like assess you. And she, uh, she says, I don't think that was your entire tribe. 
What, like, sorry? She says, I don't think that was your entire tribe. I'll be honest, I don't know much about orc warbands, orc tribes, orc way of life. You're quite a contradiction, I feel, so what I've learned from you I don't feel is a accurate picture of larger orc life. And she says that with like a kind of kind of flippant tone. And I think I think at this point as as well, like I would just you know, kind of laugh a wee bit and go, remember, I'm a half orc, but I this I'm saying it with a bit more pride in that kind of like Yeah, like I kinda of laugh it off because yeah. I, yeah, because, well, you know, the chieftain was kind of making it out as if it's something lesser, and I just kicked his ass, so, ha ha ha. And then, um, yeah, and as you say, like, you know, I'm a half orc, ha ha ha. I am, mm. um, like, her reply, she kind of looks at you. And again, man, you're in complete, like, you're in pitch blackness, right? Like, it's totally dark mm. now, I am, um, during this conversation. And she says, No, I don't think you are a half orc. I think you've always been a full blooded true orc. I just don't think your chieftain knew what an orc was. And now he's dead, so again, doesn't matter what he thought about LOL. You. <laughs> Crumbar does not say that. Um, so no, she, no, Scott was saying that. And um, So again, it doesn't matter what he thinks, does it? It only matters what you think. So, decide now, chieftain Crumbar. Are you Crumbar the half-orc? Are you chief orc Crumbar? Hmm. At this turn around turn and go, I am Crumbar, Paladin of the Golden Order. Yeah, do you want to roll insight? Uh, sure. That thing that I can never find. You, know. <laughs> you just got like, a red marker for you and put it on the character sheet. Roll a two. <laughs> nope, yeah. So, she has a look on her. I am. Um, like when you put your hand into like a mixed flavor kind of sweet bag and you put one in your mouth and then you realize it's the one you didn't like right <laughs> um but you did you couldn't tell if it was going to be that one or not so it was the oh is this going to be something i enjoy oh no it's not so bertie bob soul flavors yeah like yeah it's the equivalent of getting the coffee flavored a uh, whatever Reverend. sweet yeah like, that's uh, the best one um, I figured somebody would say that's why I never used that example initially and then yeah so she has the look like that you can decide obviously what it means because you don't get anything from me on a six but the mm. she looks at you like that and then she says disappointing and I was kind of hoping you would embrace your potential quite frankly but that's okay this is your path after all not mine Mm. Uh, when she said that I'll just you know about embracing my potential and stuff I'll go currently with the way the world is what I have to become is unimportant all that matters is stopping what evil is about I'll deal with my, you know I'll worry about myself after this job is done Roll insight again. Guess what? I seriously think you're just doing this so I know where the insight button is. <laughs> Trading. <laughs> Boom! Not 20! Cool. So, you say that line about obviously, you know, getting rid of evil, etc. And she looks at you and the look you can tell is... Think back to a time where Crumbar would have been... Like when he was rescued by the second tribe, it would have been mm. a young kind of, you know, I guess for orc teenage orc, um, just about to become a man who thinks he can take on like the world, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because that's obviously orc child mentality. You've been taught to like nothing is, you know, beyond your ability to kill or destroy or defeat, right? Yeah. Um, and you were put into like a a training circle. With all the other kind of like younger orc boys and girls there, and you, you're up against like the kind of, the kind of combat trainer, if you will, the leader. I am of a, 
you know, make an everyday battle ready. Probably like the battle master or something, I guess you'd call them. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever, you can name that. And uh, that person, male or female, you, you're you picked because maybe you're distracted and you're talking to somebody else, being like, oh, I want to go fight next, you know. And uh, they go, Crumber, up you come, you know. And you're like, oh, fuck, <laughs> I've been picked. Um, mm -hmm. And then you do that thing where you're like, yeah, but I've been picked, so I can't, like, you know, show anyone then. up. Yeah, so you become, you know, you, like, flare your nostrils, you, just, like, route your feet into the ground, you, like, brace yourself, you put your fists out either side, and then you just, like, roar, right? So you roar as this little, this little angry half-orc. Um, and uh, the look she has is the exact look that Battlemaster had on their face, mm -hmm. which was, it's the, they're pleased by your bravery and your attempt, but it's quaint, mm -hmm. right? That's the look she has. Uh, that's what a nat 20 will get you, by the way, on an insight check. <laughs> Welcome to them. And uh, yeah, so it's as if a fly has come up to you and said, let's arm wrestle, right? She doesn't seem convinced you're capable of doing that in mm -hmm. the slightest. Um, now, you don't get a sense with your nat 20. Like, you do not get a sense that it is a... What's the phrasing? You don't get a sense that it's her thinking you're weak to like your mind control and everything that happened to you moments ago, right? Like it isn't the fact that you lost control in the fight or the fact that you like absolutely annihilated your chieftain or whatever or you got angry mm -hmm. and like screwed up to her or anything like that. She isn't saying you are weak. She's just implying that she doesn't even feel remotely threatened by you. Like it's more like she is so sure of herself yeah, that you are nothing to her. And that is what you get from that insight check. So I don't know if you do anything with that, like that instinct reading, because it's for whatever reason you just suss her out in one look. Hmm. And maybe it's like yeah. a combination of like the like the hour of conversation you've had with her, right? Maybe it's a combination of all the little phrases that have finally clicked in your mind, and you've went, "Yeah, she's basically being like like a cat playing with a mouse, right? But verbally, of course." Because, mm. I mean, you can see the size of her. But, like, it is that. That's her attitude. So, it's like somebody talking like they're ten feet tall, right? When yeah, they're only yeah. five... What was, her, what was she, five nine or something? Five ten? Uh, I think she was five nine. Yeah, I, th I, I think at this part I'm... Because you're, like, what, like seven foot, right? So, you tower uh, over. Six something. You're six, yeah, like, either way, like, she's only... She's five something, right? So, you, yeah. you definitely, like, tower over. Um... But yeah, mm. so I don't know, like, how do you want to react to that, or do you react to that? I think at this point, Crumber is just, like, kind of done with this conversation, and it's that kind of way, like, yep, you have your pride, I have mine. We may, like, in that kind of, in so my it, head. Yeah, I was going to say, or in, in, in Crumber's head, sorry, it's like, you know, you've got your pride, I've got mine. The fact that me and you might take things for, you know, might be proud about different things mm. and like I'm not even gonna bother arguing anymore. But I will just simply say to him like it's so it's getting very dark. Are you are are you able to see okay? And then uh, she looks at you directly, eye contact, intense staring. Mm -hmm. And she says Yes, I think I've seen enough. Hmm? She says, like a, yes, I think I've seen enough. And she just stares at you. And I just ask, like, and I'm just confused by that. I mean, can you see where you're going? Is what I mean. She smirks at that, like a proper self-satisfied smirk. And then she says, I'll give you this, Grumbar, chieftain of the lost, forgotten tribe. The decimated tribe she, you can clearly see she thinks you can like see if she's getting a rise out of you and then she says um i'll give you mm -hmm. this you know 
tutoring of a, a gone tribe. Uh, I came here looking for signs of my brother's influence and she kind of gestures with both kind of hands like as if you are it and mm -hmm. she like motions with both of her hands and she goes and I found it and it's wrapped in gold and she kind of just like lets out one kind of like laugh like just like a ha huh. and she like shaking her as if it's like this is hard to believe right do you say anything back to that or do you let her do her thing I'm just trying to think because obviously I'm just basically meaning can you see okay in the dark yeah but right but and she's been weird yeah and she's just being weird I'm like so at this point I'm like are you feeling okay that isn't what I ask you and then she kind of just like she exhales and she goes ah oh, simple simple crumble I have so many questions running through my mind <laughs> mm -hmm. and then she takes like a step towards you kind of mm -hmm. like you know I don't want to say aggressively but like that's the best term I've really got to describe like very like quick right yeah and she like puts a hand like on your chest like on your armor do you do anything like is there any reaction to the fact that she's just like moved really quickly towards you I'm more just concerned than anything now I'm like yeah, what so I'll do right, like, okay, it, what it I'll doesn't need to be a reaction it could just be like okay this is happening no, um, <laughs> concerned I'll just kind of like put my hand on the top of hers yeah, and like, um, your hand in armor, or is it exposed at the moment? Uh, I don't think my I get hand armor from my. Yeah, so like your your like hand, no. like yeah, your hand um, touches hers, and you get like a tiny like static shock from her. No fucking way! And then, like, uh, before you can even react, mm -hmm. she pushes you back. And you smack into a tree and take 2d6 of damage from the tree as the tree snaps in two. I take 2d6 <laughs> from a fucking tree? You got from, yeeted some. From her just pushing you with one hand through a tree. Like the stump of the tree is now between your legs and the, the tree is snapped over your back and you're lying there on your ass. So, so two, 2d6? Yeah, yeah, you can roll it. Yeah. Nope. So you're saying this lady could have been way more useful to us in combat than you've played her be, eh? <laughs> I'm not saying that. Maybe Crumbar is just imagining all this from his crazy juice he drank. Took 10 fucking damage from a tree, mate. I yeah. mean, she did heal you. She could take that HP back. Yeah, so that happens. And then, eh... Uh... Am I, wait, am I, like, still standing, or...? Roll a... let's see... Corner strength save, you pick, right? Strength. No. <laughs> you're oh, fuck's sake. Right, so you're smacked on your ass. Um, yeah. The tree so this girl just. This, this woman just laid me out through a tree, okay. Yeah, and it is literally just like her hand resting on like, her chest, and she just extended her hand, and you mm -hmm. smacked back. And. Uh, Bruce leads you. Yeah, and. Uh, you fall obviously through this tree like there's just the quick thunder crack of the tree snapping right because it's just this instant orc applied to tree branch or tree trunk um, and it collapses over and there's now like maybe 15 or 20 feet between the two of you now like this has just all happened so goddamn fast mm -hmm. um, and then like you kind of like your vision slightly unblurs as you shake your head and you look back at her and she's standing there and she's like I'll be seeing you, Grumbar. And then lightning hits her. And she's gone. Bitch, she stole a move. So there's just you and like, this kind of ozone type smell left over um, in the dark. Damn. Uh, we're going to take a break like, here, guys. So I know, I know, I'm not even <laughs> there, but still, damn. <laughs> 
So we'll take our break here and I'll see everybody in 10 minutes. Uh, okay, bye. Yeah. Bye. Half-orc, what? <laughs>